Hi guys, Micro here. This is Sir Camelock. Uh, wait, hold on one sec. We got the wrong script. <clears throat> hey there, I'm Micro. You may have heard my voice before if you've played RuneScape 3, even though I've moved over to old school nowadays. I think Jagex thought I would be a good suit for this video as they yoinked Araxor from RS3 as well as myself, so me and Araxor are kinda one and the same. Anyway, enough of that, let's get into what you're here for, a first look into the brand new Slayer boss, Araxor. Requiring 92 Slayer, he can only be killed on a Araxite Slayer task. This bad boy is an absolutely massive 7x7 7 .7 venomous Araxite whose lair is in the Araxite's nest. This is near Sleep, which you would have encountered during a Night of the Theatre quest. We've also given the lair a makeover to accommodate its new and improved denizens, like look how cool this looks. This fight is designed so you can effectively choose between both faster but tougher kills and what I personally will be picking because I'm bad, please don't judge me, slower but easier kills. The way to achieve this is by giving players control over Araxor's spawned Araxites. At the start of the encounter, you'll notice a number of eggs around the room. Over time, these eggs will hatch and release unique Araxites into the boss encounter. These unique Araxites are particularly susceptible to gear that you might associate with Splatter and a Spider, which is pretty cool. So I would recommend checking your bank and bringing the right tools for the job. If only Old Screenscape had a newspaper weapon, right? Future reward space? Jagex, please? These Araxites include an Acidic Araxite. This one hits with low damage range attacks and leaves behind a pool of venom when killed for you to navigate around for the rest of the fight. There's an exploding Araxite who will explode after a brief period when it's near you, very similar to how Nylacus work inside Theatre of Blood, so it's probably best to stay away from these. And lastly, there is a Mirabak Spider who takes some of the damage you deal to Araxor and reflects some of it back to you if you're next to it. Be careful though, because if you try and just take it on directly, it will reflect that damage back at you as well. But the cool thing with this damage that is reflected to you, you can then go ahead and reflect it back to the mirror back to dish out additional damage, an uno reverse of reflect as I like to call it. So you could even consider a well typed vengeance to get that uno reverse on them maybe. Or you know, just play it safe and deal with them from afar as you take no reflect damage from them if you're far away and not near them. If you've ever taken on a ranks or an RS3, you'll know full well just how fun mirror bags can be if not dealt with correctly. Although all of these eggs can be destroyed before they hatch. Choosing to destroy the eggs does take time that could be spent beating the shit out of a rank source, so it's up to you, the players, to decide how dangerously you want to live your life. That being said, you don't need to destroy all of the eggs, right? So you could just choose some of the spawns you find particularly problematic and only remove those ones. <coughs> Mirror backs. <coughs> You getting to customize your difficulty with these eggs is really cool in my opinion, and I am a big fan of this. Araxor of course boasts some fearsome attacks of his own, and the fight will ramp up in intensity as you continue to reduce his health. Unlike the alchemical Hydra, this enrage phase doesn't require any counting, which is a huge plus. I'm playing a video game, I'm not looking to be a mascot. The fight's simple enough, but you'll need to be well prepared, so stock up on some good food, combat boosting potions, and some anti-venoms before heading into the lair. So now let's talk about some of those juicy rewards, shall we? These are largely detailed in the original blog, but I'll give a brief summary of each one here too for those who don't like to read. There is the Araxite pet, which is the rarest of all the cosmetic. There is a base pet, and it's a big ugly guy called Nid. But do not fear, he can be upgraded with a drop to become Rax. Rax is this little cutie. No hate to Nid, but he's clearly an upgrade, hence why he is upgraded. The wording is correct there. There is the Jar of Venom, the middle cosmetic in terms of rarity. This one's used in your player own house display case to show off Araxor in all its glory. Unlike the other jars, this is the first untradeable jar, which is honestly, in my opinion, super awesome. I like that this jar is an untradeable. There is an Araxite Venom Gland, which is a secondary used to make an extended Anti-Venom Plus when combined with a normal Anti-Venom Plus. Alternatively, this actually could be used in a pinch to cure the long-lasting effects of Venom, but in doing so it deals a small damage of Venom to you in the process of clearing it. Another reward we have is the Arania Boots. These have now been moved so that they drop from the smaller Araxites rather than Araxor itself. The reason for this choice is that they're the most common of the rare equipment drops. 
so they likely would have held no value since they'd passively be obtained by players chasing the rarer drops. This coupled with the demand that we expect will be somewhat low, we felt that it'd sit in a healthier spot if they were attached to the little Araxites instead of the big boy Araxor himself. These are lightly tribrid boots and they have the same strength bonus as dragon boots but with some added magic and range accuracy and no defensive bonuses. These have no requirements to wear so as long as you're able to afford them or obtain a pair for yourself you can rock these new kicks. Next up we have the Noxious Halberd. Now we're getting into the big boy loot. This is a main hand DPS halberd, first of its kind for a really really long time. It's about on par with the Blade of Saildor on paper, but has a slower attack speed so it falls off as your strength bonus from gear slot increases. But even with it falling off slightly compared to the Blade, it has other useful bonuses making it potentially better suited in certain areas of the game, as it does have an extra tile of range. This is pretty unique and could lead to some awesome uses on its own. And on top of this, for 50% of your special attack energy, you can go ahead and cure any venom or poison that you're afflicted with. This will then increase your next halberd's attack's minimum hit for the amount of venom cleared. For example, if you're about to be hit for 10 venom damage and you use the special attack to cure yourself, your next halberd swing has a minimum hit of 10, rolling between that and your max hit. Pretty awesome. Last but certainly not least, we have the Amulet of Rancor. This is the new best in slot amulet for melee. An untradeable Araxite Fang drop from the boss must be combined with an Amulet of Torture to create this amulet, and the combination process requires 86 crafting. The Amulet of Rancor itself is tradable, so effectively you only need the crafting level to make the Fang drop profitable if you're a main. Plus honestly it's worth making the amulet yourself just to see the sickest animation I've ever seen while crafting it. Look at that man, it's so cool. Alongside Araxor, we've added smaller Araxites that you'll be able to take on, the ones which now drop the boots mentioned earlier. These NPCs can be fought in multi-combat, allowing you to wrap up a task more quickly. This might make for a nice new Venator bow and cannon task. If you're a particularly efficient player, aka a nerd like me, you could stack them up for barraging with some dance or alts. This is similar to how people do it with blood belt tasks, and it makes those pretty insane, so this could make these pretty big XP too. I'm personally super excited to see Araxor in old school RuneScape, and shout out to Jagex for being crazy enough to let me voice over this. I sure as hell wouldn't have, and I've been Mike Roo, and until next time, see ya.